I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Number two, we will call the September 15, 2022 Village Board meeting to order. Roll call shows everyone is in attendance except for Shauna, and she is excused. Four agenda changes. There are none. Five consent agenda. A, August 18th, 2022 regular board meeting minutes. B, licenses and permits as presented. And C, presentation of accounts and other claims against the village. If there are no questions, I would need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve consent agenda. A second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Six pre-registered citizens to be heard. Jim Clegg. Lonely Road, Portendale. Jim? Jim? Yes. Jim Clegg? Yes. I'm up right now. You are? Yes. Okay. Oh, hey. I just, I'm here tonight to get the, the road approved. Uh, page two. We completed the requirements for the village. Face close down. Shoulders down. I think uh, you guys looked at it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Seven. Hopefully, oh, sorry. Oops. We have Andy. Mark. One one five six Esther Ann Lane. Yep. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say um, that we appreciate you guys taking the time last week to discuss everything with us um, in a separate meeting. Um, we know we probably got a little emotional during it. Uh, we still don't necessarily agree with the choice to not go after the developers and hold them accountable for the repair costs. Um, but we do want to say that thank you for listening to us, and we recognize that you guys were on our side for the most part, so thank you for that. Anyone else? No. No? Okay. We will move to seven committee reports. There are none. Eight unfinished business from previous meetings. There's none. Nine new business. A discussion and possible action on flag acceptance of roads, wild wind, phase two. So Jim Clegg requested that we put this on there. Um, developers agreement um, has a few caveats in it that need to be finished out. Um, one would be potential culvert between lots 46 and 45. Um, which is our access easement road. Um, there's the, per, or the curving gutter from phase one that he should be paying put into the phase, as part of phase two. Um, uh, he said he took care of this, the uh, shoulder. Mm -hmm. he yeah, it out. That's, that's um, basically cleaning out the culverts um, of free of debris prior to the acceptance and then a written report by the public works director will be done after. Um, I just think at this time we're still waiting on a village engineer report um, on some of our drainage ponds back there. Um, there's potential an issue with one of them um, and we want to make sure our engineer signs off on it before uh, accepting anything. So I, at this time I would say that we should probably deny acceptance of the roads. I, yeah, and then uh, lot 32 and 31, those issues kind of were talked about, but we still gotta figure out how we want to uphold that over the life of the subdivision. <coughs> so um, that's the access road, basically. Um, and right now the plan, it's going through 31 and 32. The plan would be next year, according to Mr. Clig, that it would not go through 32 anymore and just go through 31, um, which is the original plan anyway. Um, so then he would be able to sell that lot 32, but 31 wouldn't be able to be sold. So we kind of have to figure out how we're going to uphold that portion. Um, but yeah, still waiting on the engineer's report. So without that, it's hard for me to say that we should release. 
So you want to table it to the next board meeting? Yeah. Okay. Well, until I guess until our end, we get an engineering report and get a better outline of what's cost we need to charge to. So the engineering report and all of the other things you mentioned, culverts and that sort of thing, the access road. Right. That sort and of then thing. potentially holding a portion of it for another year um, due to potential damages. Those as well. You need a motion. Uh, yeah, to table it. I will make a motion to deny it this time, but uh, defer this until the um, preliminary information and tasks are done. Is there a second? A second. that. Okay, roll call. Peter. Aye. 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 Okay, motion denied, or the motion was carried to deny it. Okay, B would be discussion and possible action on bare walled property, 603 South Nash, we submittal. Um, so this was the property that um, had an issue with <coughs> the energies outside their house. Um, last year, <coughs> the energies did some work there and supposedly didn't, two years ago, um, didn't finish it. Um, and they went ahead and contracted someone to do it, and then they charged, they're trying to have the village pay for it. Um, you guys ruled before that we would um, hold it off for now and submit it to We Energies, which we have. Uh, we're still waiting on a response from We Energies, but the homeowner requested that we had them bring it here and see if you guys would reimburse it because they believe that we should reimburse it and we should be waiting for We Energies. Um, Oh, we're not the contractor. <clears throat> right. And I told them I would put it on the agenda. That's it. We Energy hasn't given you any response? No, they take a while. It took them two months at that first gas leak we had to get us the response back. So, I mean, it, when it was something that close, they have to look back a few years and try to find it. Um, I think. You know, the homeowner did reach out to us once. We had staff go there. I think um, there was an issue where staff didn't follow up with that uh, homeowner. But then the next year, they just decided to hire a contractor. Didn't get, didn't talk to the village again, and then tried to submit a bill to us. So I think, although our staff kind of it was during a turnover spot, but um, even though that we didn't uh, follow up with them. I still think they probably should have taken that other step to reach back out to us, especially if they were looking at trying to get reimbursed from the village for it, because they heard mm -hmm. I, the invoice we got, it's not a typical business invoice. Um, it's just a listing of things and a price of 285. I don't think it made it into the packet. Okay. It, did. it is. It is. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we've gotten a copy before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of uh, yeah. That's the all, all the information. Two hundred eighty-five dollars. Yes. Yeah. Labor and materials. Topsoil, seed, and fertilizer. So what? We energies didn't replant grass after they. Dug it up or what? Pretty much. I mean, they supposedly they left it as a huge hole in the middle of the person's yard. Yeah, they didn't do a very good job if they did. Okay. So this was all the way down Nash. Are, are there yes. other? <coughs> I, mean, I remember this. I mean, it was a couple of years ago, but I do remember it. Where they, were, they went through, I don't even remember what they were replacing. Remember this yes. on Nash? Natural where they, gas lines. Natural gas lines. They were mm -hmm. laying plywood over these yes. holes over the weekends mm -hmm. and stuff. I'm just wondering if there's other properties. Is any of this village owned? Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, yeah, I feel bad for them, but this is, you know. It's not a big amount. Yeah, it's $285, but the, I mean, the village doesn't have anything to do with this. The best we can do is try to represent them and help them with the energy. So yeah, I don't right. think we have any right. any responsibility here except to try to assist as a go-between. Frankly, at this point, I don't know if the energies will reimburse them just based on the quote they have. It's, it's just kind of a hard thing for yeah. them to accept, so. But we can continue contacting the energies on that. 
Because we energies have an open, like I know we reported a street light out and then I could go out there and look and I can see that it was an open and is there an open case for this that we can see? Probably not. It's direct it's with the supervisor of the project and then basically they go back and look at the contractor that they hired to do that work. <coughs> okay. So I know it seems odd, but I mean it, it is buried on their website, yeah. This is something they should take a small claims court against. We mm -hmm. have this is not this is, we we have no interest in this. Right. We have no financial interest in this work. Do you need a motion? Yeah. We need a motion to not do take any action. Well, I mean to deny the citizens' request for reimbursement. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion to deny the request for reimbursement. So, before anyone seconds that, so deny the reimbursement. But can we take any? I mean, can we pursue this at all with the energies? So yeah, I mean, like yeah. we have been, I mean, yeah. but it's, it's <coughs> like once a week, okay. right? Just so that we can share that we are trying to get, you know, mm -hmm. help. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I assume that's our, that's our, okay. that's our responsibility to try to help, but we're not financially responsible. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> We move to see discussion and possible action on authorization for monies to be wired to fiscal agent from LGIP funds. This was just a request from LGIP. We've had those accounts in there for quite a while. <coughs> they needed a formal approval from the board in order for me to transfer those into our purging accounts, the new investment accounts with LGIP. So based on what's sitting here from LGIP, uh, just so that we can understand it, what are you moving? Just so we are moving all of them. We're combining, I think number one and number seven, and there's another one we're combining, but we're moving all of that and getting better, much better interest rates. And this was. Do they go over it, like, besides combining one and seven, are they going over in kind or are they getting all getting combined and we're just maintaining the records for what, what goes on? No, we, we kept, I think there's five accounts total. Okay. So. Basically, we just need an approval that I'm allowed to do that, to wire it to the new investment. I'll make a motion uh, authorizing the transfer of the funds from the LGIP pool to where? Per or is it Pershing. Pershing. To Wolf River? To, no, from, from LGIP to Pershing. Okay. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. D. Discussion and possible action on county cost share agreement for Main Street construction. So the county wants us to sign a cost share agreement um, stating that we would be willing to basically share the costs in the Highway 15 reconstruction. Um, this cost estimate is just an estimate at this point. Um, right now they're looking at doing an RFP for engineering. Um, and once we get an approval from our board, they would move forward with it. Uh, the only thing that's not on here is any of the engineering costs or construction costs for the local utilities, sewer and water. So those we would have to wait for until the engineer gets their preliminary numbers. This project is three years old? Yes. Well, 25 and 26, okay. but the first part actually is going to be 24, which is going to be a water, water sewer. sewer. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? That could substantially change. It yeah. probably will. So what is, maybe I'm not under, okay, so, so 
basically the county is gonna the state gives us funds for uh, the basically everything in the center of the road the 24 feet of road um, and basically the rest of it the county is pretty much splitting with us um, cost wise which is normally not done so basically the total cost estimate right now is at 1.7 million for the whole uh, highway 15 reconstruction from um, point to point from end to end right so which points from uh, Greendale Road to uh, Industrial Road. Industrial Road. Industrial Road. Yeah. Then what's the 7.3 million? That's the total cost of the project. Okay. But it, it's split between the state, That's us, the and three. Okay. Uh, so for the village, total project is 1.7 million. Estimation. Yes. Estimation. Yeah. Without water sewer. And <coughs> so how much of that is the village likely picking up? And how much of that is assessment? Like I can't, can't really estimate that. I would say that we have about 1.4 million in TID funds that are meant for that Main downtown. Street. Yeah. So, um, without water and sewer estimations in there, I'm sure there there might be a large amount for assessments, but it depends on how our TIDs end up performing on Main Street. Okay. This is the, like when the county guy came in and went over, they're basically paying us to take over the roads at this point, right? Or is that? No, no, no. no we will not be taken over. Okay, so this will become the county road then. We'll take TT at the end of 23 when the state gives over the county okay. jurisdiction on 15. Mm -hmm. right. But that becomes double J through town, is that correct? correct. So correct. yeah, 15 is gonna get passed from the state to the county. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <coughs> and then we'll take TTD from the county. Okay, so normally this entire cost would be absorbed by a municipality. Is that what you're saying? Or well, or so the county is in the past never really done cost share on certain things like lights, sidewalk, and they are so that's been a first for them from what I've been told. So, so it's a gift to us. Okay. Mm -hmm. No. Don't argue. No, I'm no, no. <laughs> just, just looking for clarification. I'm not, if they want to, if they're going to pay you know, five million something, I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, it looks like five and a half million they're going to pay between the state and the county. Um, so, what do we need? A motion. Motion to accept the uh, the payment agreement for the. Cost share agreement. Okay, and they're doing, so we're doing the work, they're doing the work. So, as of right now, uh, we, yeah, we, we aren't doing anything. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is they're going to put out an RFP for engineering firms. Mm -hmm. Then, once they get the information back from all the engineering firms, their board will decide who the engineer is. And then, the board, that engineer will actually go out for bids for the actual construction project. To, to oh. include our costs? Yeah, it'll all be in one. Uh, the okay. Base project. Yep. Okay. So we, and then just to, just to let you know, we will be involved with that decision of yeah. the engineer. So yeah. Okay. And okay. then this will will there'll be additions to this based upon the changes that we want to do with the downtown with the widening and the no um, no this is in part of it. This is all part. This of estimate this. includes the widening of the downtown, the ten foot bike path from end to end. And lights. Lights, curb and gutter, left there. Yep. Right the only thing it doesn't start the sewer. The water and sewer. Okay. Alright. I'll, I'll oh, actually, I, I make a correction. The street lighting is actually not downtown. estimated right now. No. No, it says to be determined. To be determined. I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll make a motion to accept the, the county cost share agreement for the Main Street reconstruction. I'll second. second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. 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 <coughs> Motion carried. E discussion and possible action on Halloween downtown event. Is there anyone here to I discuss don't, I it? I don't see Brad or John, so I think okay. that's our answer. Then we will go ahead with. I have a question, though, really quick, and you told me to bring it up. This would be the appropriate time. So. 
I know there was a talk of a parade like we normally do and that sort of thing, but in years past, the middle school band would march with the trick-or-treaters. And I don't know if that's something that we as a village, or if you're looking for someone to try and connect with some of the middle school band directors to see if that's even an option. Because look, those middle school kids, then they would dress up. I remember I did it myself, marched in the band. But I don't know if that's something, it's not really a board level thing, but I don't know where we start with that. I would say we would direct Nathan mm -hmm. to have someone contact the school, correct? Yeah, I, I mean, can, I can. I can help you. Or I think Atley probably has some connections to just some middle school <laughs> band. <laughs> but it, it was fun. So, yeah, something to add. Did, are we doing the parade through downtown? Yes. We are. Well, no, not, no. not through downtown. Oh, speaking oh. of. Yeah, right there. Are you here for the uh, Halloween stuff? That's what oh. we're talking about right now. You're up. You're up. You're up right now. Right now. Uh, we haven't done anything. That's oh. why I'm late. Um, <laughs> Is there any possibility to just run the parade down Main Street this year and just get some visibility down there and try to plan something for next year? What's your thoughts, Chris? It's a possibility. You would have to contact them. Mm -hmm. I just have to submit another. Uh, just submit another request. Uh, for a parade route downtown. I just need to know what times. Um, and if we're just walking through, it's going to be just equivalent to the homecoming parade. Mm -hmm. We usually do the parade around 2, don't we, or 2.30? Yeah. which is usually yeah. 2 to 30. 3, and then 3 is the trick-or-treat. Yeah. Is there going to be an issue, though, with timing? Because, I mean, if, if you go in downtown, we're not coming here, obviously. So is the plan to hand out candy... Because the municipality always comes up with a bunch of candy for kids. Sure. I mean, we could do it if we blocked off Pine Street, potentially, and we could still hand our candy out there as the municipal workers that volunteer their time for. Okay. I just... Or in the gated area. Something. Uh, the church. By Bethlehem, maybe? Where? The gated area by Bethlehem. So if they come around the corner, past the bowling alley, and then they can go up through Pine and then yeah. kind of release and hand out candy over there. So the problem that we're Downs running into, Nash. and the problem that we're running into with the homecoming parade is Cedar Street's not done. Because normally what they do is they come out of the golf course, they come down Nash Street, then they go on to Cedar Street, Cedar Street to Mill Street is what we were planning. Mm -hmm. And then we would plan on to go down Main Street and then come back to Cedar Street to the school. So that was going to be the parade route for the homecoming. So, but Cedar Street's not going to be done. Right. So we're trying to get the permission. We're trying to get permission from Bethlehem to take it all the way to Na down Nash, go through to a Barris to cut through the parking lot. So a bar is working on that. Sergeant Barr is working on that to see if we can have both gates opened up. So that would be something that we could potentially, unless Cedar Street's going to be done by Halloween. Better. And so Brad, anybody were you contacted Bethlehem? Brian Barr was working on that. So okay. Yeah. Before you came in, I had mentioned years ago we used to actually <coughs> middle school march or would march. They would the kids would all dress up and they would play their instruments and they would march. I'm not guaranteeing that that's ever going to happen, but we're just talking about maybe we connect somehow with the school to see if, or both schools, Greenville and Hortonville Middle Schools, to see if maybe we can get a middle school band to march. Okay. You know. Well, even if, even if you just had the different athletics, you know, football, volleyball, all those guys, I mean, with all the clubs and everything else coming out, letting people know that we still have sports in the schools is good, too. Well, I think people know we have sports. I think people know well, we have people are aware. We think, <laughs> just listen. Yeah. Are, you <laughs> fine, are you fine with us doing it on Sunday? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. So there's our proclamation. Yeah, okay, okay. So, um, I can be, I can always work with them to come up with a route. If okay. You guys are okay with that? Yeah. Um, yeah. To try to incorporate everything mm -hmm. yeah. with Chris, of course. Okay. Then we would go ahead with the proclamation, which is, I, Jeannie Belisle, Village President, hereby proclaim Sunday, October thirtieth, twenty twenty-two, between the hours of three p.m. and.
5 p.m. as the official time for Halloween trick-or-treating in the village of Hortonville. Okay, then we will move to G, discussion and possible action on roof replacement from storm damage. Do you have one quote? Great. We have two actually. Um, no, we did, but we chose. We did. We choose. We choose uh, security. security loop before that. How much of this uh, total uh, is covered by? What's our deductible? So. Hmm? Do we have a deductible? Yeah, it's already it's already calculated. It's thousand dollars. Thousand bucks. The issue is they're only covering certain things. So really, what we need is a discussion on which things you want us to move forward with, and which ones you don't. And the specialty items are going to be gutters and uh, roof. Yeah. And metal roof. Yeah. Metal roofs aren't part of this quote. No, oh, they're it's, not. It's cosmetic. So. Any of the cosmetic damages is not covered through the insurance company. Um, they did, after a lot of complaining, they did offer to give us $2,000 towards it, but that covers very little. So at this point, it's deciding on which, how, which uh, properties if, that we would want to kind of replace gutters and the full. So why are gutters not covered? They, they believe it's cos more cosmetic, cosmetic, cosmetic. Than, than actual. Yeah. Even if they have holes in them. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. None of them technically have holes. They just have dents. Mm -hmm. And chips, paint chips. Yep. One was destroyed, but it's only five feet. It. So they're still functional. Right. That's what they claim. Well. Yeah. <clears throat> interesting. So if we did everything, 338280 is what it's going to be. $338,280.51 is what they propose, correct? So if we did everything, it would cost us $326,314.52. Our insurance is covering $294,037.59. So there's about 32,000 or so that is unaccounted for. So, um, but there's certain things like we know, so the Veterans Park roof, it, we're not gonna replace that. Um, the wood shake roof for 10,000. Um, that we're gonna probably take and do a new uh, pavilion there instead, because okay. it's already pretty old. Um, the Alonzo Park, I mean, yeah, it's only 500 bucks, but I mean, that one we're pretty much already on pace to kind of have to replace in the next few years anyway, the whole building. Right. So, um, so take that one out too? Yeah, I mean, if you want. Yeah, um, I wouldn't. The Miller Park ones, I had, Craig, I had Craig go around and look at a few of them, and I don't know what your thoughts were on everything, so. Well, right. So I think number one is the admin building here. So if you want to, in prioritizing this, um, okay. the admin building should be number one, and we should do everything with the admin building. Um, this is going to be here a long, long time. You guys aren't planning on building another one and moving into that, so <coughs> probably not in our lifetime. So it's very important that we look at this as a whole. Let's get this up to shape. Number two in the priority here is uh, the Opera House Community Hall. That should be number two on that. That is another structure that's going to be around for a lifetime. Um, Do you know how long ago we did that roof? I didn't think it was that long ago. No, 13. 13, yeah. yes. It wasn't, wasn't that long ago. Yeah, yeah it was here at the 20th. So I think that's really important uh, to do that. Number three, I had Miller Park. Uh, that is well number one. Um, we are planning on doing anything with that structure, so I think that's number three on our list. That'll be around for a long time. 
number four, I have Otto Miller, the ballpark. The restroom facility, I think that should be done. Um, as for the gutters and, and et cetera on this one here, um, I'm not worried about that. We have a lot of balls that are hitting them gutters and denting them anyway. So to replace them with new ones and have them dented again. <coughs> yeah. Um, the storage sheds, um, I think we're going to hold off on that here for now until HYS and the school decides that, hey, are we going to do something different with the sheds down there or what? Uh, number five, wastewater treatment plant. So as we're prioritizing here, we're not going to get everything done this year. So we're going to concentrate on, hey, what the number one priority is in this, this facility. Wastewater treatment plant. Um, every building down there needs something, unfortunately. So I would like to see that potentially done next year. I'm still waiting for a quote for the blue tank that's down there, the sludge tank. Uh, they're supposed to come in and inspect it. We don't know if that metal roof is a structure thing and how that was dented or not. We need that inspected. Um, loop key, any of the others cannot, they wouldn't be able to uh, replace that either. So right now we're okay, nothing's leaking. So I think we'll be good on that. Six, Alonzo Park, and then seven, the pavilion uh, at Veterans. So that's how I prioritize stuff. Um, but the two biggest things that we need to look at is this building, and then again, Opera House. Opera House. Everything. Okay. So, so those facilities and those buildings that we don't do this year, will those damage Nothing's laws getting done this year? What? Nothing will get done this year. It's too late. Oh, okay. Did they say that now yeah. for this building? All right, so suppose... They said they could do some silicone sealing on the uh, skylights to protect them over winter. Um, but short of that, they would not have time. All right, so we've only... Your, prior, your priority is to do this building in the Opera House next year? Well, I, yeah. And the other ones. But those that we don't do, will those damage losses carry forward to the next year? The claims? The, two yeah. years. So we two years? Got, yeah. We got two, two years, years to replace it all. We got the first check, um, and then they'll send out another one once we have this. What was the date of the, uh, of the occurrence? Do you remember? April, April 12th. So you have the, April 12th. Yeah. All right. So you have April 12th of 24. Yeah. Is that correct? To get the rest of this done. Okay. So are you proposing that we do redo the like the gutters on this building and um, you see the downspots and the gutters and how dented and painted it? Oh absolutely. Okay. And so where are we coming up with the extra money? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how I mean, much is this gonna cost? Does that mean they're functional? It's yeah. no that I mean uh, it's I, I looked at my gutters, and if, if, if to be and to be honest, if the insurance company mm -hmm. wasn't going to cover them, I would have left them on. You know, because the only way I see them is if I line up in the sun the right way and look down at the right time of day, yeah. and I can see all the dings. Otherwise, I don't see any of the dings, and they still take the water and run it to the downspouts, and they disappear. I mean, uh, they I run into them with the lawnmowers; they get dented <coughs> and dinged all the time anyway. So I, I don't understand why if they're if they're fully functional to the point where the insurance company is not going to cover them. Um, why are we just carte blanche looking at replacing all of them? Did they actually come out and inspect the insurance company? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they said they're fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said he don't, they, they don't, he just basically, they don't cover it. They, they don't cover it. To them it's cosmetic. Um, Even though yes, they might be dented, and it's not part of the structure or structural, it's cosmetic. So that's how they're. Yeah, my insurance covered like three quarters of my gutters and downspouts. <coughs> so yeah. yeah, I had to fight for mine. Yeah, me too. But I, I mean, I don't see, I, I, I don't see the reasoning for, especially like the water treatment plant, right? I mean, that's uh, it's not like it's a public, publicly viewed building. I think that if there's the some things and dents in the gutters, to replace only the event, the gutters and stuff yeah. on this building and. 
opera house. house. Right. The opera they're... house especially, yeah. You can see that. Well, yeah, it's... Yeah. We have other stuff we need to do with the opera house uh, gutter system anyway um, at the same time. Yeah. So basically to have the water run rather than it run through the con or the uh, asphalt there, the idea is to have it run to um, underneath so that you don't have these freezing a bunch of uh, water during the uh, freezing thaw cycles. How long is this quote good for? If you're not going to do the work till next year, I mean, it's already been approved. Yeah, it's already been approved. It's just we need to decide on what we want to do with it. I mean, the contract's approved. Yeah, we approved it. Right. We approved it. So the opera house usually gets some pretty elongated icicles. Right. That's. So right. is that something that we're we're correcting uh, with this roofing not, and gutter? Not that's totally. The issue is with that is it's the insulation. Yeah, it's an right. insulation thing, but could we, I don't know, I'm just trying to think like, so with the gutters, isn't that damaging the gutters every year? I see the gutters hanging there, wonky. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. <coughs> I don't know, I'm just, with the new heat uh, coils or something that they put on? Yeah, those heat coils. And we could talk about that some other time. Facilities especially, you know, looking at the buildings that have it, just FYI, that uh, the heating system, the HVAC has been changed in there. So there is some different things that have happened in there this year. Oh, is that going to change so that? I don't know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. We haven't got into that. Rob and I haven't talked about that too much yet. So it gives us an opportunity to address it if we wanted to, but it's not. Yeah. Well, then maybe we need to have well, a facilities meeting to talk about because I feel like right. if we're going to spend the money on a roof and gutters for the opera house, then they're going to just hang wonky because of, of all the, the icicles. Well, then maybe we address this and we because it is bad and it's actually a safety thing too. If you're, I mean, granted, it is it weighs off the sidewalk, but yeah. it is a safety thing. I'm sure the issue is in the attic, though. Yeah. 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 Improper ventilation, not enough insurance uh, insulation. Yeah. Like I'm looking at the, the aerials of it, and I don't really see a whole lot of venting. And when you talk about ventilation, I mean there's just there's just a few things that maybe a facilities meeting where we can talk about this a little deeper before we <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, the facility. agenda for the yeah for the public facilities meeting, correct? There's no rush. And then we can. I think we need to have a public can, facilities to dive deeper into this. We can, yeah. You don't really need the approval tonight, do you? I mean, I guess it, it'd be nicer to have a outline on some of the stuff. I guess the ones that you guys are questions on, whether it's the admin building or, and the opera house, but are you guys okay with the other ones being as is, and we're just gonna replace the roofs and not the gutters? Unless, unless something, unless somebody looks at it and there's actually a problem, um, I would be okay with leaving the gutters and the balance walls the way that they are. Unless, I mean, if there's an existing problem and it's damaged, the insurance company should have paid for it, but because uh, then it's functional and not cosmetic. Right. But uh, but yeah, I'm okay with especially you know the areas where people aren't going to really see them, or at the field house where they're getting hit with baseballs. There's no reason there's no reason to invest in replacing those if, if they're still functional. Okay. And since we're going to be paying for it, we can do that at any time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the opera house probably not, but. It's harder because yeah. of the height. Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Right. Well, the same people that do the rope don't typically do the gutters. But. Right. But yeah, not in this case. Right. Be a subcontractor for that. Yeah. They do. No. Security Lucy is their own gutter team. Oh, they do? They do? No. Okay. Supposedly. So well, they're not doing any of it this year, so let's, right. let's make a motion. To uh, we don't need a motion. I, at least I have a direction on the other stuff, and we can talk about the admin building and stuff and facilities. Yeah. Okay. Everyone good with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We'll move to H. Discussion and possible action on reimbursement for clothing DPW. So currently, our current personnel manual is a little confusing. Um, the public works clothing reimbursement. Um, basically the director 
bought some clothes and wanted to be reversed. He had 150 in his line item, um, so he's requesting reimbursement for the rest. Um, he didn't. He, played, he said he didn't have. Uh, he thought he got more. So um, I told him that I. In had the personnel that. manual, yeah. keep going. In the personnel manual, it states within the first year you get 400 dollars. So. If you look at it, and it is kind of key while so here. The here. wording's kind of right up there um, on the second paragraph there. It's towards the end. Yeah, it. It's not. I don't know. I think it's a little vague, um, which is why it's in the next section that we're going to talk about too with the personal manual changes. So. <laughs> So why are we so, so specific in the current personnel manual? We, we have one bullet point that says 650 per year is clothing, safety, shoes, safety, because, okay, so, but then initially, the second bullet point, initially the village shall provide the director of public works and newly hired full-time employees. So it's, it's addressing the steel-toed safety shoes with the allowance of one pair. So it's specifically saying the shoes and one pair of glasses. Is there a reason why that's so specific? So the, uh, yes. Uh, the idea is you don't want someone coming in in December and getting 650. So then it goes into a prorated number um, for your first year. And we want, but we wanted to specify that we at least get them their steel toes and safety okay. goggles. That makes sense. Thank you. <clears throat> So basically, we're right Basically, now. you guys, I, I didn't really have the, I didn't feel like I had the authority to approve it, because uh, it was outside the personnel manual. I don't have an issue with it. I think initially, Carl's initial thought when we were kind of coming up with the public works director's um, clothing allowance was, depending on the director, if they're in the field more, they might need more money for reimbursements. Um, you know, I think initially, a few years before, um, it was, they got the same one as the personnel that are down at the plant, and then that was taken away by someone, so, um, I, frankly, I, I don't really have an issue with it, it's just more of, I need to get clarification from you guys and permission before reimbursement. This was this was modified. I, I wasn't here, but this uh, this was modified. So because there, you have an office personnel versus someone who's working every day, is that what, is that the gist of it? Is that why it was? I think that was, was why it was modified, modified back then. I think they were, they were just <coughs> trying to yeah. you know yeah. take it away from the coworker. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I understand. I don't have a problem with it either. I'm just Do you I, need I, a I just trying to understand. I'll make a motion to approve the reimbursement of the. Two twenty nine ninety eight for uh, clothing allowance. Is that the reimbursement amount, or no? The no, the, no. Yeah, yeah, because it's up to six hundred and something. The only, otherwise, it would he be paid for it. We oh, gave him. Yeah, we, I think we already gave him one hundred and fifty of it. So then, so the additional seventy nine. Seventy nine. Yeah. Okay. That's a, no, it's a full amount. Yes. Well, that is the full amount. So we already paid him the one hundred and fifty. So <coughs> seventy nine ninety eight would be the additional. Right. To, to total two twenty nine ninety eight. To reimburse them. Yeah. <coughs> Correct. But you mentioned two twenty nine ninety eight. That's the total amount. That was the total. Okay. Clarification. Okay. Okay, is there a second to the motion? I'll make I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Motion carried. Aye. Discussion and possible action on personnel manual change R-18-22. So <coughs> there's a, in the packet there's a, an attachment which kind of explains some of the changes, the only changes that would be made. Um, one is addressing the personnel leave. Currently we give 16 hours of personal leave. Um, those were <laughs> created basic, I think we used to have eight and then we got rid of the Good Friday as a holiday and allowed staff that wanted to be here on Good Friday, they could 
so we got 16 hours total. Um, currently, right now, the way it's worked is you don't get it until after your orientation period, which for the village employees is three months, but for the police employees, it's one year. Um, so basically, it's a small change that would allow them to have some vacation if they need it. <coughs> them, the police, you mean? Police and our staff within the first three months of being here because they have zero vacation in the first three months, zero sick, or they started growing sick leave, but they don't have a bank and it gives them personal time. So you would have to update the union contract also? No. No? Union contract doesn't specifically state it. Okay. So just the reference. personnel manual. Yeah. yeah, this is just the personnel mm -hmm. manual. Um, so then we would address anything that's approved in here that's not in, that's dressed specifically in the union contract differently. Do, do we have an issue with them, people in the first? Yeah, I mean, it, some of our, some of our officers yeah. definitely, you know, they don't get vacation even for the first year. Um, so well, this, this would allow them to have two days. This throughout. would allow them, I mean, they, they have a separate contract. Right, but their, con but their contract goes off of what the personnel manual says if it's not specified in their contract. Okay, and it's not specified in the contract? No, they have the same So how do, they, how do they get it's one It's specified that it's, it's off of the personnel manual. Okay. There's, the reason that their orientation period is different is because they actually have a... FTO program? Right, so it's a probation okay. period. So program. it doesn't specify the amount of time, it just specifies that their orientation period is different than a... Right. Village employee orientation mm -hmm. period. Right. Okay. All right. Any other questions? That's the first part of the change. Uh, the second part is <coughs> splitting off the clothing manual or the clothing allowance, fixing that issue with the director's portion, um, which would be basically splitting it out between public works employees um, and then the public works director um, and. Basically, what we did is he gets 150 plus um, 150 prorated for his first year, and then the uh, clothing allowance going forward would be based off of what's in the budget under that line item in the director <coughs> area. That way, you have a little more flexibility, and it gets approved by the board, anyways. Okay. Um, um, and then we did add in there also. Um, a difference for the exempt and non-exempt employees. Exempt employees for the um, embroidered clothing would get a um, hundred dollar every year towards that. Um, exempt employees are depart department heads. Um, and basically, this only affects three department heads who are not currently getting any clothing allowance at all. Um, and it's just for basically embroidered village clothing. Okay. So, um, but going back to the orientation period, you want to remove the orientation period completely? No. For, okay. Ori we just want to make it consistent so it's three months now. No. Okay. The personnel manual, it would just remove any mention of, it's an on-hire um, accrual of benefits. So, the day someone's hired, they would get two, 16 hours of personal leave. Okay. Well, um, is there a... Is there an issue that we run into where people want to take off? Yes. Like right after they get hired? Not right after, but within a month or so, they have different things going on. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I've had a number of jobs in my life, and most of them right. uh, have a policy similar to this where you can't take any time off uh, for a very short period of time. And when you interview, if you <coughs> know you have something come up, coming up, you typically work that out in the interview process. Right. Uh, so that way it's stipulated right in your hiring contract. Otherwise, uh, otherwise it's not usually, you know, acceptable to, to take off right away. I just figured you probably don't want to amend the union contract, which is the only way that you could make it so that it's the same. And that would then push up any type of, they would be a full, they would get a pay raise and everything after three months rather than one year. I, I see where you're going. So you're this way it just made it clear we, we rarely have most staff that has that issue 
most of them are fine with taking off for a day or two, but for those in the union contract, it is nice to have at least two days of vacation where they currently have zero for a year. It's two eight hours, not two 12 hours. Right. So it's, so it's like hours. one. So it's only actually it's a day and a half or not even. So how do you currently deal with this? Because your officers are the ones that, this is this is the reasoning for this is the officers. So. Well, I mean, it's, for, it's a little bit of both. It's the right. officers and, and them. But if I have an officer, like I had an officer who had a wedding who wanted to take six hours off this week, and I had to tell him no. So it okay. wasn't something that he knew about. the He didn't know the wedding. Yes, yeah, I understand. Yeah. But I hired him. Yeah. So I had to deny him to go to the wedding. But if he would have had two eight-hour shifts, then I could have, I could have allowed him to go. So it's just, it's a morale thing, it really is. So right now, what they have to do is they have to find somebody to switch shifts with. Is basically right. what, right. like the rest of the world. Right. But if you can't find anybody to switch <coughs> with you, then you have to go to work. Then you have to go to work. Yeah. Yeah. Now, like, does the library staff use the personnel manual for this sort of thing? We do, um, we get the two floating days, but I believe it's also, we follow the three month probationary. Yeah. I usually do a three month probationary review. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not in favor of removing it completely. Um, I, I think it's fairly standard across the entire industry that, there, that when you start a job, you're expected to be there um, you know, on a consistent basis to right away. And you're not expected to, you know, within your first three months to be saying, oh, I want to take this day off and that day off. But I have to disagree because Otagibi County, if you start at Otagibi County, they start you out with two weeks vacation from the day that you start. People are, people are having to adapt to the, the market out there and, and what's out there. So mm -hmm. they're, they're doing laterals with vacations, they're doing laterals with <coughs> um, just so that they can get police officers for that matter, anybody to work in these open positions that they have in <coughs> offices and police departments. So if, you know, if New London's got a posting and, and they say two weeks vacation from the date of hire, we're behind the ball game here. And, and I, I know that that's the way it used to be, but we, we as a municipality have to keep up with what's going on all around us in order to keep our employees. Yeah, okay. right now that's I think my, that's my two cents. Weeks vacation. Yeah, that's what we. That's the hire. Yeah, we. I yeah. think we have to look at things like <coughs> this to for morale and all kinds of mm -hmm. things. I don't think this would be that big of a deal. Things come up. Yeah, yeah. At the end, anyway. So what's the difference if we're giving it to them at three months versus? I mean, I agree with you, Jim. In a perfect world, they would let you know that when the in the interview yeah. process, but right. And, I, and I, had was, I had that with the hire before. He had a trip that was planned for Florida, so we worked. We worked around it. We we altered the schedule and everything else so that we could do it. I mean, that one worked out that way. This one was just so happened to be a wedding was planned a month before it happened. Um, you know, they decided that they were going to have a courthouse it wedding. It's a different with, these days. It is. I mean, yeah. I, I I I I understand. I I. I I understand all the points. Mm -hmm. um, you can call me old school, but I mean, I've I've had I've had uh, positions where you know, hey, I want a Tuesday off. Nobody wants to work. I will take your Friday, your Saturday, your holiday, whatever it takes for me to get that day off if it's important to me. Um, and you know, I, I I I'm just not in favor of it. I think it was put. I think originally it's put there for a reason. Um, put there uh, to demonstrate consistency in the position it's put there to prevent abuse of the days the taking days off and time off right away it's put there so that way you are there every single day through the through the period of your orientation which is the time period where you're supposed to be there to learn to how to do your job instead of extending it out so you have to have somebody else there um, to be able to teach you um, I think there's a number of reasons why it was put there in the first place um, so I'm not in favor of it I wouldn't want nine months to jeopardize the morale. Oh, I, I completely agree yeah. with you, Peter. Yeah. I, I think that there's a discrepancy. I think that needs to be resolved somehow, but I, I don't, I'm not in favor of completely removing it. <coughs> well, we can take it out. 
you can address it and have it as a separate negotiation if you want to with the union at a separate time and basically address it that way and just kind of pull out and say that you get it after three months if you'd like. I think it needs to be consistent. Um, I think that I think that the police department is being is unfair because of your orientations it it's applied unfairly. Um, right. So, but uh, and I'm probably in the minority, but I I just don't think it's uh, I think it's there for a reason, and I don't think it should be completely eliminated. When's the next contract negotiation? Another year and a half. A year and a half. You can't get yeah. it over earlier. No. Okay. So to get through this evening. And I, I agree with you, Jim, but I also go, I, I gotta go with morale on this point, and then we're just in a very different market right now. If, if we wanted to go ahead with this, what action is needed? Well, if you're fine with the changes as presented, you, you could just approve the uh, personnel manual changes um, that, are in, that are listed here in this uh, R-18-22. Then I will make a motion to approve the personal manual changes in R-18-22. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Okay, motion carried. That's the first. So now was Jay covered under that? The benefit updates? What? Discussion yeah. and possible action and benefit no. updates? No. No, that's different. That's, that's for next year. Okay. So then we need to discuss J, discussion and possible action and benefit updates? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that should have been in the packet as well. I don't see it. Nope. Nope. Mm -hmm. To the next we would one. need a motion to suspend the rules to allow for us to go out of order. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. We will then move to K. Okay. Discussion and possible action on creation of title and compensation levels for the position of OIC and OIC in training. So basically, the way our compensation works, we compensate based on our wage skill that we did last, I think it was last year we started it, um, and we did it with our positions. These are two positions that are not going to be billed as of right now. It's a position placement, I guess, uh, is the way to say it. So the OIC would be right under the clerk treasurer as a pay grade 10, or for the OIC in training would be under the clerk treasurer at 10, and then the OIC would be rank 11, where clerk is rank 12. Um, so if we go out to the wage scale, um, the OIC in training would be starting anywhere between 49,303 starting next year to 54,434. Um, and at next year's rate, if we had an OIC, they'd be at 51,250 to 56,584 as starting. Um, it's basically all we're doing is creating the title and placement of where we think it would go in our position. It's not promoting anyone. It's not giving anyone this position as of right now. Um, we do have one who actually qualifies for that, but that would be something to add a later date.
and the need for this realignment is because of how I guess what triggered this so we don't we didn't have it in our last one because our OIC left and we were doing using <coughs> something else in the meantime um, basically we have a um, a, tr uh, a current employee who is finished all of his testing and is considered already through the state as OIC in training. Um, that being said, the village's um, OIC didn't ever have an OIC in training line, um, and so we had to add these in potentially. Um, and our OIC position requires five years of experience at the village, so. How long is the training, OIC and training before you go through OIC? That's up to you. Uh, technically, DNR. through the DNR, it's one year, isn't it? Um, from OIC and training to OIC is one year, mm -hmm. typically. You have to have four years of experience right. to learn the OIC. Right. Okay. But And then you have to have five years to be, so, so how much would you have to have to be OIC and training? OIC and training needs four years. According to the DNR, it's what, four? Four, four years. And then it takes one year to be. And then it takes another <coughs> year to be OIC. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. With the DNR, four years after that, four years, boom. Then you are. With According us, to the DNR, ours is different. Yep, ours is different. Okay. So we're five, DNR is four. Okay. No, I'm just asking because I'm just yeah. wondering how much of an incentive it is to go from OIC and training up to OIC. If it's, you know, because it seems like they're pretty close. And I mean, I mean, usually when once you get that qualification, usually it's a bigger, you know, you, you expect something. Well, I mean, there's a decent. I mean, it's a decent range. You have a. I mean, if you wanted to, I mean, you can put them at any step in that range. Those the first six steps are just our hiring ranges for those. Okay. You're talking actual ranges. I mean, you go to the max side, it's kind of hard to see, but number 11 and 10, and 10 basically max is around 67,000 for 11 and 65 for um, 10, so. $2,000 a year, yeah. That's not just saying. Right, I mean, that's kind of how most of ours are. Okay. Um, most of our staff mm -hmm. is when you're going from a training to a fully trained it's a small <coughs> i mean right but if let's say they they were in operator and training and they were in step three is where you started them you could always have them in operate but when they become an oic you could have them up at step six if you wanted it doesn't okay. doesn't necessarily yeah. mean you have to okay i mean it's not where i'm at i'm just yeah. right. i'm just just throwing it out there to so to get a feel for if that's a, right what you guys think is reasonable for those positions is this enough? I mean, I remember when we were trying to hire, how it was hard to find an OIC. Is this, are we adequate here? Are we at market? We are about at midpoint. Okay. It's a little under midpoint for our area and everything else. The difference is when it comes, the hard thing is when you're taking the way the wastewater do their, uh, their financial reporting or their wage reports when I get those they don't have specifics in how you how the longevity of the people at the positions the number of years of experience <coughs> on average for the mid for the ones that reported were nine years of experience so we are about at the midpoint for nine years on average experience position for the most part I think there's enough flexibility. We also have to look at Hortonville in general. We will not pay the top dollar. It's, we can't, we can't afford it for all of our positions. That's part of the reason that you look at benefit changes. And the one thing we do offer here that no one else can is flexibility. So for our staff, when they have family events and they need to leave somewhere, we allow them to flex that out as much as possible so that they don't have to miss those things. So. We kind of got to amplify the areas that we can. And I mean, it's a starting point. It can always get changed, so. so. What action do you need tonight, Nathan, 
uh, to approve the two locations or the two positions, titles and salary ranges. Actually, I'm just looking in the packet. Is this in the packet? I mean, is it referenced somewhere that you need that in there? No, it's just the resolution or on the front of the agenda, basically the title and <coughs> to approve the, approve the uh, the title and compensation for <coughs> OIC and training and the OIC. I'll make a motion to approve or to create to create the title and compensation level for position of OIC and OIC in training. I'll second that. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion <coughs> carried. Do you want us to go back now to J? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. We'll do J, discussion and possible action on benefit updates. So in front of you is the proposal. <coughs> uh, basically, I, I kind of need direction at this point on what to move forward with. Um, I basically have been able to fit it all in the budget as is with all of these approvals. Um, one is changing our vacation levels, um, altering those. Um, basically, the other changes are the HRA changes, which um, basically has a budgetary impact of about eight thousand um, dollars. Then you have the longevity changes for the full year, which on the second page should have a listing of basically the, a five-year projection um, if we can maintain employees on what that cost would be at a 2.5% raise over those five years and what that would cost and then what the cost of the part-time would be annually as well. this year um, but I do think that we should have done this anyway I said I think that this is a, 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 a way to help attract people to a, to a market where we can't afford to pay them as much and and it minimizes our cost discussion about this one time in a, in a previous meeting, right? Yes. Yeah. So the big, the big, um, I want to say that the perk is that vacation adjustments, right? So I, I think we have a lot of new employees, so that's a big perk. Uh, I think the HRA, I think, is a bigger perk than people yeah. realize. Um, our current staff, if they have a family, I think they pay about 2800 out of pocket if they have a you know, if they meet their deductible and beyond, um, which can be a lot. And this would reduce it down to the max out of pocket of being a thousand, which is a huge deal I yeah. think, for most families. Um, and I, I think it's a better perk than a lot of people realize for us to have. And it doesn't necessarily mean the village will actually take those expenses. Only, I, I think we have about uh, half of our total on average of our HRA is paid out annually, currently. So, um, the, uh, yeah. the budgetary impact would be about eight grand. But um, the longevity uh, is actually a decent benefit mm -hmm. too for the newer employees um, as well, pushing that down to three years and then another way to maintain our part-timers by allowing them to be on the longevity as well. Um, have you discussed any of this with the employees? Multiple times, yes. Okay. And what are their feelings versus so um, getting a 2.5% raise versus a 3% raise? or? Well, I think, 
I think the issue is when they're looking at a three percent raise, it's not what they're looking for for enough of a raise. Okay. I think if, if you don't do this, you're going to have employees expecting at least a four or five. We have municipalities currently that are looking at six and seven percent raises. Last year, Greenville alone did a seven point nine percent raise. Um, and my guess is they're going to be doing a large one again. So if we're just trying to compete on the financial side, we're not going to be able to. You guys, I mean, you'd have to raise a bunch of taxes in order to do that. And it's just not <coughs> that. So it, I think this way, altering these benefits, you know, doing a 2.5% is what we're currently budgeting for, um, is, a, I think it's a good proposal. <coughs> But I think what they're looking for is their money in hand right now. With so we, we do have a few few employees, probably I've heard about probably two or, th I mean, I'm sure there's another one that's never said anything, but there's at least two that are kind of, they don't care. Um, but they're also not on the insurance yet. So it's hard for them to know what it's like to pay for insurance because they're currently on their parents. So they've never experienced that, um, which is a hard thing for them to, look at as a benefit mm -hmm. but also we can't afford to do five or six percent raises I mean across the board we'd be we'd have to cut other places like equipment and everything and a higher deductible can kill your monthly dollar I mean once we get our <coughs> deductible caps we pull in but I mean I no, this doesn't affect the PD until the next contract negotiation. Correct? Um, the vacation does not affect the PD until the next contract negotiation unless you guys want to take that up. Um, except the longevity HRA, that all affects the police mm -hmm. as well because yeah. they don't have it okay. separated in there. Um, but the vacation one is something that we could always talk about at a different time in a closed session when we're talking about negotiation. If you guys wanted to negotiate something like that, sooner than the next cycle, so. Okay. And the longevity is an incentive to stick around. Right. It's That's the goal, is to try and retain our employees. Right, because it usually costs us a lot more when it is, so. Has anyone shared concern with you not liking this proposal? I mean, have there been employees that are like, no, just give me the money? Two or so, I'm sure. Uh, there might be another one that never said anything. Okay. But I think for the most part, from what I've heard from staff, is this would be a huge benefit for them. But unless they just don't tell me these, that they don't like it. But I think most of the department heads seemed fine with it, which you can ask them about it. Put everybody on the spot here. Well, I'm like Jane. I'm sitting next to Jane going, so we would like to keep you around. Is the longevity sort of a perk? And I don't want to put you on the spot. But I mean, do you yes, think yes, over, yes. overall with staff, do you think that would be kind of a, a perk? I think <coughs> Yeah. I think whatever we can do. With it's retention. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. retention issue. Yeah. That's really what we have. And the whole point is to retain. And people work here because they like that flexibility or they like this community or, you know, they want to stick around. And, and then longevity to me seems a way to incentivize that. This would take effect when? The beginning of 1-1 one, one of 23. We would have a separate uh, resolution for the official passing of it, but I kind of wanted, you know, what your thoughts were before I start doing budgeting for next year, even more than I already have. I have most of this already in, and we're still looking decent at this point, um, where we won't have to cut, so. So we don't need a motion, we're just looking for a head You're just looking for a head I'm just looking for it, because I'm, I'm expecting that this is going through then, basically, for the most part, but I guess not officially. Okay. Well, is how I'm looking okay. for Thank you for putting all this together and yeah. being creative with this. Because yeah. <clears throat> it is hard. There are no more questions. 
Okay, we will then move to L, discussion and possible action on the final resolution for Wild Wind Phase 1, R-12-22. Is R-12-22 in here? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it should be. It's just yeah. buried. Oh, it's in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I think. Page 62 mm -hmm. and 61. Okay, and then you have the final engineering report on 63 to 67 or 66. Okay, I see that. Thank you. Sorry. It's page <coughs> see on the left. On, on the left here, I'll give you like what page. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So sixty one and sixty two. Mm -hmm. So this is based off of our discussion from last week. Has anything right. changed? Has anything not on our side? I mean, the only thing that's changed was what you guys directed me to do, which was putting the assessments for each parcel at 2533 minus the, yeah, so that's what it's at. With the option to pay up front without any interest, right? Correct. And or they could make five installments or pay earlier. Correct. There was question from the residents about how will they know that they can go ahead and pay this. So once this happens, that the letter's gonna go out tomorrow okay. with the final resolution and asking them how they wanna pay. Okay. One time payment or it'll go on their tax roll. They're supposed to return that letter to me and then we proceed. Okay. I know that was a concern. So, mm -hmm. so that'll go on this year's tax roll. Yes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. I'll, make, I'll make a motion to approve R-12-22. I'll second. Roll call. Aye. 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 Motion carried. M. Discussion and possible action on the resolution for a preliminary special assessment for wild wind phase 2, R-21-22. So this is actually in front of you. Um, I didn't have time to get in the packet when we got the engineering report the other day. But this is to charge the Clake subdivision, phase two, with a preliminary assessment. That way we can get um, it going and have it on the tax roll, uh, or have it on the uh, real estate inquiry forms. And it would also address it to the developers in that area would be the ones who are cited for it as of now. So you can see that James Lanco would have around $60,000 of assessments. Of, yeah, and anyone who owns a house in there would have about $4,627.95 per parcel. When's the uh, <coughs> uh, final code put on after 75% of the projects are completed? Next year. Next year. Oh, next year? There's a date? On it. We're doing it next year. Oh, you are? Regardless? Yes. Does that become a legal issue? No. Oh, we have an attorney right here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, isn't, it, isn't it specified in the developer's agreement? I'll be honest, I'm not familiar enough with it. I, 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 Ashley and Rich have been on this primarily. Yeah. Um, Ashley's the <coughs> one who suggested to me to move forward with this as soon as possible. Who did? Ashley. Oh, Ashley. Otherwise, I would have done it in a future meeting. So. And I got a briefing on potential issues, and that was not something that came up. So, but yes. I'm not familiar enough with it to present it right now. Well, as you know, uh, I've made an offer on Lot 53. It's not due to close until December 31, if I want to close it all right now. Uh, <laughs> regard regardless of that, <clears throat> you're specifying 7% interest? Yep, because we don't know what the interest rate will be. Okay, but that's preliminary. 
Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. The numbers and the interest rates can be changed at the final. Okay. And that final would be where or when? Next year after it's completed when we have the final amount. Got it. This is just to get it registered. This is the preliminary process. So because maybe just for Peter's sake, so It'll it's done. currently owned by James Land. It does so basically the title company then would send us a real estate inquiry form. Mm -hmm. Then our staff would write the amount that's due on there. Then he would have to negotiate with his legal or whatever on who pays that or how that's going to get paid for between the two parties. And then this would trigger, so where we had the questions from the folks in phase one, that right. there was that they contacted the village and the village said there was no assessments right. pending. This would trigger that and that would force us. Or it would force the developers to deal with it at this point okay. rather than later on when, if someone's not reading through the, um, is this one actually has a tie to each property. But the village, if somebody were the title <coughs> company were to contact the village, right. the village now does need to say that there right. is a preliminary assessment on these. So yes. if somebody would, wouldn't say that in information up front, at least our paperwork would be accurate. So we're just trying to get way ahead. And well, get the paperwork way registered right. way, way early. So <laughs> this is this assessment. <laughs> I mean, before we even know, I mean, for sure, the details. Well, this is an estimate by Ronald, so this yeah, is right. an estimate, yes. which is right. kind of what they did for Wild yeah. Phase 1, um, was they created an estimate, so it's similar. Yeah. And he basically based it off the tonnage of what was MCC did on the binder coat. Yeah. Um, well, so okay. we're, just, we're just trying to get an initial number on, on the books before, say, like Peter goes and buys a lot, then he has to be notified that it's there. So right. Hardly any well, and it makes the developer have to deal with that landowner yes. at that point yeah. on right. how, how that's going to get paid for. Okay. But does Peter, you're just asking, so you have a pending offer on yeah. this? So, Thank you. I mean, obviously, I'm just wondering if Peter needs to abstain from this vote, just... Well, no. I don't own it. You don't own it, but do it pending on. I don't have any right. rights to it right now. It so, wouldn't matter. Okay. From what I've understood in the past and how we've done it in the past. Right. We okay. assess property owners before who okay. are on the board. Okay. I just I, want to make sure we're not... And who knows? Maybe December 31, I decided I don't want to Don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. Maybe I find something else. Yeah, when, when it comes to the final mm -hmm. vote. You so this okay. assessment would take place effective 1-1 one, one of 23? No. 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 Next year. It would be after the final code is done. Which would be next year. Right. Yeah. Some so all right. probably September or so around this time again. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve R-21-22. Believe it or not, Alex, second. We all want to second it. Yeah, I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Anybody here from Lot 30? Development 2? And payment request from MCC for final Miller Park project. <clears throat> uh, seeking approval for final payment to MCC, model 130, 135, 46. Is the water drainage issue corrected with the landowner that was? Here. So Thank you. I think it's mentioned in my report. Mm -hmm. it, there's sorry. no cost in here as of right now. If not, I can talk about it in my report. So we don't need to you know. I'm, I'm, uh, no. I'm less concerned about the cost than to make sure it's finished before this yeah. sign before we make the final. Because my understanding this whole time is this is going to be resolved before we get the final payment. The issue is being handled by a different company. Okay. That doesn't that doesn't meet the re what, what we were the understanding that I have that the issue is going to be completely resolved before MCC or before McMahon gets the final payment. This is, and this is what we've been discussing this this whole time that this has been going on. I I understand that, but so basically, fine. I'll address it now. Um, as of right now, we have a 
quote from a contractor from Wolf River Asphalt to come in and to get that shorn up over there and the driveway redone for the homeowner. That was done through a donation that I was able to find for his driveway, completely funded through that donation. The villages will only pay a portion, which is the um, sweat, the sweat, and then the homeowner will pay a portion as well. Okay. And the homeowner signed off on it. We met with him and Wolf River Asphalt last Friday. So, so that resolves the he's issue. He's happy with that, um, and you know we're just waiting on whenever Wolf River Asphalt can come in and do it. But there will be an official vote on that contract at a later date when I get it. So it was a significant donation. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thanks for yes. To get thank that. you. That solves some headaches. Yep. Um, no headaches here. For the for the property owner, board board level. <clears throat> so I, I believe the only two things that are left is that area, and then we have the gates. The gates and <clears throat> lighting that box. Right. So the gates are separate from this. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that was not planned for. It was something that we found after that we needed. Um, and the, the lights timer switch that box it's failed already uh, it's cracked broke whatever whatever it might be uh, that is under warranty however um, we may be changing out that box but that may be at an additional cost if we decide to change out that box we're just trying to figure out what's going to be best for Push button timer, you know, timer, whatever it might be. So uh, we haven't figured it out yet. Still working on it. So, but if we change the box on it, that's a warranty issue. So. Any other questions? Otherwise, we're looking for a motion. Well, make man's aware of the problem with life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there, there's nothing else? Everything else, no, 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 everything else is good. It looks, it looks awesome. A um, lot of work involved. I uh, think it's a lot of use, so. Cool. Yes. That was soon. We got a lot of compliments today. When they had the pickleball. People were very, very happy with Miller Park. Good planning, good follow up. Oh, it's cool. I'll make a motion to uh, make the final payment to McMahon and Associates uh, regarding MCC's work to complete uh, the work done at Miller Park in the amount of $252,078.69. Awesome. Second. Is that the Wait, right amount? No, no, no. no, that's, no that's, that's, that's not the amount. That's, that's not the right oh, that's, amount. No, that's for uh, what am I? Uh, it looks like a certificate for payment. Yeah, 69. 31, 35, 46. You're going to have another one. No, it's actually 164, 821. Okay, give me a right number. Okay. $164,821.01. So insert that number, Jane. <laughs> yeah, I have 134. It's. Katie. 164. It was miscalculated. Oh, okay. So he corrected by Ron. He wrote it on the. It could keep going to the back area. Oh, okay. okay, you got the right amount? Yes. Okay, that's the motion. Second. Roll call? Aye. 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 Motion carried. I didn't get that copy. So, <laughs> sorry. It's all right. O is payment requests from MCC for the first payment on Cedar Street and Wild Wind Phase 1. So this is the finishing of Wild Wind and part of Cedar Street. This is the 
$252,078.69. Second. Roll call. Aye. 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 Motion carried. P. Discussion and possible action on purchase change on 2022 truck. <coughs> Earlier this year, <coughs> we looked at um, April 21st, actually, uh, to be specific. We looked at actually uh, a 6,500 series truck. <clears throat> Personnel changes, changing of uh, some of our operational uh, requirements, needs, whatever else. Um, I wouldn't say dumb down a truck, but we didn't need that size of a truck or that big of a truck. So I looked into this a little bit further and um, Talk to Plock. I also talked to All World Ford. See what we can get for a regular one-ton truck. Um, significant difference in price. I think this is going to fit our needs uh, better. Spoke to Mr. Plock. Um, that should be in the packet here too about this. Um, he has no issues with uh, us not purchasing that truck. He can make a lot of money off of that truck compared to what we were going to actually purchase it for. So he, you know, no big deal. So just FYI. So he did give me an email in regards to that. Um, looking at the vehicles uh, a little bit, Jim does not make a gas truck. I think we need to look at a gas truck. Our current facilities and that are cold storage. Diesels are a little bit different animals sitting in cold storage. I can't have all of our vehicles plugged in. We don't have the electricity to plug all our vehicles in. So looking at a gas vehicle, um, he cannot uh, produce a gas vehicle. So he's what he did here is he gave me a bid on a diesel. So All World Ford came in at 69861.50 for um, a one-ton vehicle, and that's F-350 uh, 4x4, uh, stainless steel dump box. Both of them are going to be stainless steel dump box um, with a plow. Currently, we have a plow that is broke, broken half. Um, this way here, we get a, a brand new plow. That plow would be able to fit on any of the trucks. So. Gas powered. Gas powered. The big motor uh, mm -hmm. that Ford has got. So, yes. So, requesting a change uh, in that venue from April 21st. What's the lead time on this? Like, uh, do they have it? Or are we looking like so we ordered things <clears throat> a year and a half ago? We're just getting in our fleet. Next Actually, week. this is um, should be up at Monroe currently this week actually. Uh, he called me today. He didn't uh, say what he wanted specifically, but I believe it is up at uh, Monroe currently. Okay. Um, to wait for the GM uh, vehicle, that wouldn't have been until October. Same with the 5600. There was uh, a <coughs> date like in October, and we wouldn't have seen it until next year. So this one here that we're looking at, actually, we could have within a month. Wow. So in April... <laughs> Right now. Clock uh, quoted 95,436. Correct. And now all world is at 69,861. Yep. Different vehicle. Different vehicle. Right, I know that. Smaller one. I know that. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve all world, a purchase of the truck from all world in the amount of $69,861.50. Do we, need to, do we need to do anything with canceling that other motion? Uh, what's other motion? The one we made in April to purchase. So right now we have two motions out there to purchase two trucks. Do we need to do anything to rescind that other motion? Probably wouldn't have to do it. I would. I would. 
okay. just for semantics. Yeah, no, I think I would. Okay. No. So that could be in this motion here. But then in the motion too. Yeah, I'll just add that. Yeah, yeah. that's what and I'm. We send uh, the motion made in April twenty first, two thousand twenty first, two thousand twenty two, for purchasing the truck from Clark, GM. Yeah. A second. Roll call. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Two trucks. Q, discussion and possible action on bidding for truck replacement. So the last thing I have here is um, opportunity. Greenville is getting rid of um, a truck. And I don't know if you've seen it or if you've been by there, whatever. It's a tan maximum truck. So the 5600, I just got to say this, the 5600 was actually... <clears throat> Too big with what we are looking at, but not big enough for what else we need. Okay, so what I'm looking at here is that I'm requesting to bid on Greenville's truck. Um, I know uh, where that truck has been, I guess you would say. Who takes care of it, what has been done, uh, things like that. I have another conversation with Brian, who's the uh, fleet manager or the fleet um, uh, mechanic and looking at our Sterling, our current uh, truck, it's a single axle unit. Had some issues in the past, um, truck was overloaded, um, there were some other issues, how it flopped over, uh, things like this. Uh, this truck is a grain body truck, it's not a dump truck. Mm. So when we're looking at hauling snow and doing some heavier stuff, that truck is unsafe because every time you load that truck, you're overweight. All right. Um, it's not made for it. So we have an opportunity here. Current bid on this vehicle as of earlier here uh, was uh, 18000 What I'm hoping to do is to actually I'm going to wait. I'm not, I shouldn't say anything out here, uh, whatever, but I'm hoping to wait um, to bid on this vehicle, see if I can get it for less than. So right now I have $40,000 in the coffers. This truck is probably worth forty to fifty. If I can get it for less, 20 25 wherever that might be, I'd like to do that. So I just need approval to go ahead and start bidding. And I'm not going to bid until the last second. And I'm going to look to Nathan. Where are we at in any of these accounts and that sort of thing to the coppers to pay He's for this? He's talking about the, the yeah. equipment replacement yeah. reserve fund yeah. has, I think, around 45000 in it. That's a reserve fund, so that's not a budgeted amount technically. So it's sitting in a reserve fund, which generally we use for if something needs to be replaced because something breaks, right? I mean, are like we, this truck? Or everything. Yeah, and I get it, but I'm just saying. I, like, I, I wouldn't say I know that for a fact. I, I don't know. Basically, the what happened is anytime we sold a uh, public works equipment, it went into that fund. Carl used it how he did. I don't know if that was the goal or how it was utilized. I never saw it used for anything. And what are we doing with that current truck we have? We're going to surplus that. That's another thing I put in here. We would end up turning around and surplusing that vehicle. I have a question on how we do this in open session. How, how do we come up with a number? It's a bid. I mean, it's a bidding site. I, I understand that, but um, I mean, it, there's other people that can watch this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So um, we can't say to create, yeah, you can spend X number of dollars, then somebody can spend X number of dollars plus one, right? So. We can't say to Cray right now, you can spend all forty forty five thousand dollars. Then somebody then somebody else can just try to bid it up to forty five thousand. So so in open session I understand uh, I'm questioning how we can how we well, can why don't we do just this. let him go do the bidding and when he feels that uh, <coughs> he's got the bid, he can come back to us for approval. Well I don't think well, he's allowed to spend more than five thousand dollars. Unfortunately if I win the bid, guess what? You gotta buy it. Oh yeah, but I mean, I don't know how else you. When does it end? It's ending Tuesday. That's right. I don't understand how we do this with open session. 
Yeah. I mean, you that's why it's on the agenda for tonight. I would have waited till Tuesday, but now Wednesday, I, I needed this earlier, so I have that opportunity. We can wait to post the video. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it closes. It, it ends on Tuesday. Uh, yes, uh, actually well, Wednesday. Yeah, that's a good morning. solution. I mean, that's, when, a, good solution. that's a very easy actually, solution. Wednesday right. yes. There were problems with the past video that that didn't get posted yeah. until days right. later. So yes. I mean, yeah. Okay, it, okay. you can I, post it on Wednesday. And it would... Yeah, I'll make a mo <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion to uh, yeah, have Craig. Yeah. Yes. I'll make a motion to have Craig propose yeah, or proceed idea. with the bidding. This is. Like no, there's no, no. I, I think that line, but we, yes, are. we are, we absolutely are being recorded right now. Are we ready? Thank you. To proceed with the bidding uh, for to purchase that vehicle, not for an amount not to exceed $40,000. Is there a second? Is there a second? I'll second. I, I assume you're going to. Get it for as little as we can. Well, yeah, oh, he absolutely. Yeah. Roll call, Peter. Roll call. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Are any other miscellaneous topics for future discussion? None. <coughs> we'll move to 10. Report of village officials. A. Clerk Treasurer. Yeah. Jane. My report was in the packet. When are, um, and maybe I'm slow on the uptake on this, but when are absentee ballots, are they going to be mailed out? They, we, sh we should get them by Monday or Tuesday. We have to have them all mailed out by Thursday. That's the deadline. Okay. Every application on file. <coughs> Were the residents happy with their new street name? Did you hear anything? I did not hear anything. The letters were hand delivered. No. That wasn't folded. No, I haven't heard anything. Great. Any questions for Jane? Okay, we'll move to B, Director of Public Works. Great. Uh, uh, my reports in the packet. Any questions? Yes. Security rail on the fishing pier. Talked about it being installed this October. year. October. Oh, you moved it. Supposedly October. It would be perfect for ice fishing then. <laughs> um, no one will fall in there. Uh, oh, I'm waiting. So. Can't fall in the hole. Can't That's fall the, Well, actually, yeah. That's the one on uh, what, Veterans Park. Veterans Park. Veterans, yeah, we, correct. And we have something. We do, just, uh, just to reiterate, we do still have something on there reflectors, lights, something. Yeah. For the snowmobilers. Yeah. yeah. They're on there. Above the ice, ice and snow line. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, we will move to C. Please, Chief Chris. And my report is also in the packet. I have a question. What time is the homecoming parade, and will you be posting the route? Yes, and we're still working on the route. Okay. And what time is it? Um, it sounds like it's going to be. Um, Staging at 3.30. 3.30. Shortly after that, then the parade will start. Okay. So it sounds like, at first they were going to, I heard that it was going to be John Street by the golf course, then I heard by the school, and now I, I'm hearing again back at John Street, so. Okay. So 2.30 for sure, that's it? 2.30, yeah. Well, 3.30. 3.30. 3.30. School's in session till high school is till 3.35. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I can see why they're trying to figure out the staging. Yep. I'm going to reiterate, I would prefer to receive this in an Excel spreadsheet instead of a PDF format. Oh. Because this is yeah. this is crazy. Yeah. Okay. I sent so it in. I know you sent it in as Excel, so um, so it either it needs to be go as an attachment or it needs to go out as a separate email or something. Can we give it reimbursed for paper usage? <laughs> Would no. be nice. The village used to copy these off for us. I know. Then they got cheap. It was 95 I don't know about cheap. <laughs> it but became a real <laughs> expense. Yeah. I recall that. Yeah. How oh, true. <clears throat> Any other questions for Chris? Okay, we'll move to D, Library Director, Allie. I don't have anything. Okay. 
E, attorney. No, have Okay. F, administrator. Nathan? Uh, it's in the packet. Um, I think everything's in there. So. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm fighting a migraine right now. So, um, <laughs> it, I mean, we had the senior activities meeting today, or pickball thing today, which was a good event. We had a good turnout. Um, other than that, I think most of it's in there. And thank the people that came and gave instructions. It was very awesome. Yeah. Any other questions for Nathan? Okay, we'll go to G, building permit report. It is in the packet. And I just need to make a change on there. Dan said that the inspector changed number 22107. It was Tom Jens. We took that out and now it's Mitchell and Tori Newman for 5000 So the new total is 463193 And then we'll move to 11, Communication and Miscellaneous Business. A, Black Otter Lake District News, Pat. Um, well, I think there were a number of you at the annual meeting. I was there by phone, so I didn't hear everything. Um, but the annual meeting was held August 22nd. I think that we sent out for the first time, I mean, as long as I've been involved anyway, the first time we sent out a mailing with the agenda and that seemed to help with the attendance. Um, <coughs> our next meeting is September 28th at 6 p.m. here. So, pardon me? Isn't there a new senior leadership? Yes. Um, Sean Kuski is the new president. We, um, that election happened right after the annual meeting. And the, the um, secretary and treasurer are the same. So. There's a turnover in leadership. I don't know Sean, but he did. He hear. works in. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, if you have any interactions with him, I did hear that the the inflation reduction bill has a number of uh, car bulk in it for monies for lake, uh, lake and surrounding uh, water uh, shoreline improvements. Does that go down through the state first? I don't know. Okay. So someone would have, someone okay. in charge of that. Thank you. Someone in charge of that would have to look into yeah, where those are. Know. They're going to be really early still, so yeah, that's going to be difficult. Stuff for grants, it's that's good to know. Sean and I were fruitful in finding information in the file cabinets with oh, regards so to the 1989. Okay. Uh, we, we have our own. So what's that? Is there, is there, is it in writing then? You need to, you need to be two weeks correct. Back to anybody. We're, yeah. I mean, we're at five minutes left, not even. Anybody. 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 Trying, to, trying to be, okay. So, to answer your question, it wasn't everything, but all the DNR permits, uh, there's even photographs, all of the basin permits, culvert permits, the itemized bill, and what, who contributed in the loan. So no, no agreement for future maintenance? Nothing that was in that packet, no, but at least it's something to start with. So okay. It was hotter than heck in that shed, too, I can tell you. <coughs> Any other questions? we we'll move to B, Hortonville, Hortonia Fire District News. Okay, C, Gold Cross Ambulance Run Report and News. It is in the packet. D, Hortonville Civic Association. Uh, one thing to report, we made a $5,000 donation to the village for new picnic benches, picnic tables and benches for the parks. All parks? Hmm? For all the parks? For whatever they decide they want to do. Okay. Could be Miller, could be Alonso. Okay. Awesome. Miller could use. That's awesome. Those are proceeds from some of our events. Okay, then we'll move to E, Senior Activities Committee. Pat? Um, as was mentioned, pickleball was today. We had about 35 people there, I think from 9 to 11. Um, we had three people that um, volunteered to do the instruction and then 
two others that came with Roy Hintz and helped out, so it was really good. Wide range of abilities and ages. We had some younger people there too. So thanks to Nathan for all his help in making that happen. Um, friends of the library donated leftover ice cream toppings and we, had, we served ice cream sundaes. Um, we've got our Senior Autumn Fest on October 11th, so I can just, we've got flyers sent out and um, posted around town, so you can spread the word on that. We did get a $250 sponsorship from Wolf River Bank, so hopefully we'll be getting some more sponsorships to try to keep the cost down. So, uh, go ahead, finish. I was going to ask um, you a question. Next meeting is October 4th. We canceled the last one due to my positive COVID test and other other things. We had to we had to call that meeting off. But we're meeting October fourth. We did have another small committee meeting about a week ago also. And oh, I wanted to let you know too. I'm attending a housing seminar. I think we all got that notice at Fox Valley Tech on Monday the twenty eighth. I think it is to find out about senior housing options. How many people have signed up for the uh, event so far? Um, Lauren told me yesterday 43 so far. 43. Yeah, and the deadline is the 30th. Yeah, we had two couples in today that we <coughs> think we talked them into Good. signing up, so we told them to come up here to talk. Is Lauren back? Yeah. Okay. She is. Thank Fine. you for promoting yeah. it. So how are we, how are you paying for this? Um, well, we did send out letters to some businesses requesting, we said we would like five sponsors at $250 each. Last year we got some sponsorships for our speakers. Um, we also get booth fees, the agencies that are having booths okay. pay $45 for a booth. Okay. Um, so it, most years we've broken even, um, so we'll see how it goes. If you run short, let me know. Thank you. Any other questions? We'll move to 12 comments and suggestions from citizens present, and there are none. 13, I would need a motion to adjourn. Wow, I thought this would never come. I make a motion to uh, adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We are now adjourned.